Uh, it's often said that in a democracy the rule of law is fundamental and the most important <coughs> matter that a government can deliver. And clearly as part of that a regulated uh, appropriate uh, and integral legal profession is an aspect that is fundamental to that. And that is why, uh, whatever uh, may be the view that this is a very uh, legally uh, related debate, it is fundamentally important. And therefore, I welcome the opportunity to introduce it today uh, in this debate on the structure and regulation of the Scottish legal profession. Uh, as many in this chamber know, I was proud to serve in that profession for uh, over 20 years. I have moved on to another calling. As some would say, that's perhaps out of the frying pan into the fire since a 2004 poll linked politicians higher than lawyers in their list of most hated professions, somewhere between PR agents and reality sh TV show contestants. But joking the part, the Scottish legal profession has served Scotland well, for it was the legal profession alongside the church and education system which <coughs> formed one of the fundamental pillars of Scottish identity within an incorporating union for over 300 years. It's not perhaps going too far to say that we're not for the strength and independence of that Scottish legal profession. This debate would not be happening in this place today. And that's an immense debt which will not be forgotten by this Scottish Government. And it's not just a historic debt. We published yesterday our budget statement setting out our strategic objectives for Scotland. Two of our most important objectives are that Scotland should be wealthier and fairer and safer and stronger. A flourishing and independent legal profession is one of the fundamental underpinnings of those objectives. So the legal profession is a key part of our institutional framework, not just as a matter of constitutional theory, but because of the vital work that it does. Lawyers help people at time of crisis and time of bereavement. They protect the rights of the vulnerable and they support business and economic growth, whether it's the first house or whether people get into difficulties matrimonial or with the criminal justice system. It is lawyers in the legal profession who come to their aid. So I will defend the legal profession against those who would malign and misrepresent it. And this government will work with the profession to ensure it is able to meet the challenges of the future within a reformed and improved legal system. Reform and improvement because the world is changing and it's changing fast. An ordinary family today face legal issues that would have been unknown to their grandparents' generation. Whether it's advice on financial services, resolving a dispute with an education authority or taking action against antisocial neighbours. And businesses do not, do not need to use Scottish lawyers or Scottish courts if they can get a faster and better service elsewhere. And that is something that we do need to address. <coughs> I know that Scottish lawyers can deliver an excellent service in new areas of law as well as old and can compete with the best in the world. But we need to make sure that they're not held back by restrictions or regulation which are not appropriate and do not need modern needs and requirements. The UK Parliament has just passed the Legal Services Act, which creates a new legal services regulator and opens the door to mixed practices of lawyers and other professions, and indeed to third party <coughs> ownership of legal firms. That is an English Act, but it does have fundamental effects upon Scottish firms. Our major law firms compete internationally. That is something I think that is a good thing for Scotland and it's something in which they should seek to aspire to go above and beyond and to reflect what is done on a daily basis in other sections of Scottish uh, business, whether financial services or accountancy. Scots have always been prepared to think big and to think globally. Ernst & Young, one of the biggest accountancy practices in the world, as I've mentioned in this chamber before, still bears the name of <coughs> Arthur Young, the Scot who set up his practice a century ago. Today we can be proud of the success of businesses such as the Royal Bank of Scotland who have proved that we can compete with the best. We must not hold back those in the Scottish legal profession who aspire to similar success on an international stage. But this debate is not only about the big commercial firms. The pressures of change affect our high street firms too. Many of them find it difficult to recruit trainees or pass on their business to new partners. Firms offering a broad range of legal services struggle to compete with firms who specialise in high-value work like corporate business or high-volume work like remortgaging. Many of the core business activities of law firms are not restricted to solicitors <coughs> and alternative providers and indeed English firms are entering the market. I can understand, therefore, why some in the profession feel concerned about these changes and may feel that the profession is under threat. That is not how I see it. I told the Law Society Conference uh, of the impression made on me 
many years ago by Bob Ealing, then the Chief Executive of British Airways, when he warned a group of travel agents that the internet was coming and those who adapted to it would survive and indeed prosper. I know some, and many indeed, in the industry who have heeded that <coughs> advice, whether in specialised inbound or outbound tourism markets. They've developed new lines and new pro products, and they have prospered as a result. So for me, the issue is not whether alternative business structures will change things, but responding to the changes that are already happening and are necessary. The debate is already underway. In 2006, the previous administration published the report of the Research Working Group on the Legal Services Market in Scotland, which identified the need for further policy development by the Scottish Government working with interested parties. In July, the Office of Fair Trading published its response to the super complaint by the Consumers Association, or which the OFT report argues that many of the current restrictions on business structures affecting solicitors' firms and advocates should be lifted. Currently, all solicitors' practices operate under a partnership model and only solicitors can be partners. No one else can own a solicitors' firm offering services to the public. All advocates operate as sole traders and cannot enter into any form of <coughs> partnership with solicitors or other professionals. There are restrictions on advocates taking instructions directly from clients and appearing with the solicitor advocates in the same case. The OFT believes that lifting these restrictions could offer better choice to consumers and has asked the Scottish Government to set out a policy statement before the end of the year. By all means. Polly McNeill. Uh, thank you uh, for giving way. It's been suggested by the Law Society that the Consumer Association, which uh, has made a number of uh, assumptions about the Scottish system and has made errors in those assumptions, uh, which the OFT have also replicated. Can you confirm whether the government were consulted before the OFT gave its response to the Consumer Association? Minister. We have been in, in regular contact with the OFT. What we've always been at pains to mention is that we accept that there is a need for consumers' rights to be preserved and to be protected. Equally, we recognise, and I made this clear at the uh, Law Society conference at which the convener of the uh, Justice Committee was there, that at the end of the day, we are not simply consumers. We are committed. We are living in a community and that we have to bear in mind that we have to have responsibilities to our communities. So, as I say, our position is that we are happy to continue uh, to liaise and speak to the OFT. Uh, I can come back on, in particular, the instructions at a later stage, and if I do not get back to you, then I'm sure my colleague will mention to that. So, we are considering carefully everything the OFT have said. We agree that change needs to happen, but I have no intention of adopting a model which is unsuited to our needs as a country. Our geography, our demography, and even our topography are different from England. We are a country of small towns and cities and islands with archipelagos, not a series of large urban metropolitan areas. The English Bar has 14,000 members. The Scottish Bar has 470. An SNP government will do what is right for Scotland and will not preside over any diminution in the quality and integrity of the Scottish legal profession. 